You sure? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, as Jacob said, my name's Elaine Cork, and I've come from, well, it's a tiny little town, really, called Gravesend, which probably you won't have heard of, but it's quite close to London, so it's about 20 miles or so from London. Um, it's not as nice as Gdansk. I was saying that yesterday. Okay, so um, the idea is that I'll introduce myself. Oh, I don't know if that's going to work. We might have to. Oh, I don't want the clock. <laughs> Best laid plan. If I can't. Yeah, okay, all right. We'll have a second go. Okay, so what I've, I'm really here as a representative of our whole school. I have a very posh title, which is Director of E-Learning and Innovations. And I, I am unbelievably old and not a digital native. So every single thing that I have done, I have had to teach myself because computers did not exist when I was at school. When I tell my students that, they don't believe me. They think I am lying because, obviously, they, computers, to them, have been around for the whole of their life. And so to come across somebody who has never really used a computer when they were their age is quite shocking to them because it is just part of their being. My son, who's 14, has his life on his phone. He, that is how he would like everything to be, in the palm of his hand. And the thought of that, when I was 14, would have been something that I could never imagine. Okay? So I think my age is actually a strength, because when I say to my colleagues that they need to try and do something, they can't really use the fact that they're not a digital native, because neither was I. Okay? So, assuming this is going to work now, I decided that I needed to have a title for this presentation, so I have called it Why Teach E-Learning for the 21st Century? Because I do believe wholeheartedly that Why Teach is an exceptional set of resources that do indeed save the teacher time, but also because they can be customised to what you as an individual want, that makes them even more powerful. Okay. Obviously, I've put on here um, my name, and I've also put my email address because I would be quite happy to communicate with any of you if you wanted advice, not that I'm very good and I don't speak Polish, so therefore you will obviously have to communicate in English. I did try learning a few Polish words, but I managed to completely ruin them all, so I think Jen Dobra is probably about the limit of my Polish. I'm not going to try anything else because I might insult somebody. Okay, um, because you're, if you do copy this down, you'll spell that correctly, but lots of English people don't, and then the email will bounce back, so make sure it's AR on the end. English people put it as ER, and then it bounces back, because it's grammar when we say it, so they think it's ER. Okay. Okay, so really, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a history of how we came to use what I teach. And then after that, I thought I'd give you some examples of where we actually use it within the classroom so that you can see that it is something that we do use quite regularly. So, um, I'm a chemistry teacher by trade. And because, obviously, I had an interest in digital resources, I went out and found lots for chemistry. But unfortunately, my colleagues in biology and physics weren't so motivated to go and find things. And so when I... There's a big show in London called The Bet Show, and I decided that when I went to this show, I would see if there was anything for biology and, chemistry, uh, biology and physics, because chemistry were leagues ahead of the other two departments. So I happened to stumble across the Why Teach stand, which at that time was a tiny little stand. So it must have, I think, probably been quite, maybe the first year that you were there? Was it the first year you were there? Yes. In 2009, yeah? So it was quite a small stand, but my colleague and I sat down and we were just wowed by the quality of the resources and other things. So we decided that we would go back to school and try it. So the main things 
that I was looking for was because obviously in science quite a lot of the concepts are really abstract and you can't always do the experiments for yourself. So I was looking for videos because I knew the teachers, that would appeal to the teachers. I was looking for interactive activities, so things where they, were, they could drag things across the screen so that the students could actually interact with them. And then, because I'm also responsible for our virtual learning environment, which is the VLE, because I can see some of you looking, what's that? Um, <laughs> uh, so the VLE is our virtual learning environment. I was also looking for things that would allow us to populate that really easily. And then, in addition, I wanted to, uh, um, resources that would allow us to set homework for our students that we didn't have to mark. That was a big plus. Okay, as far as we were concerned, but we could still see how they were doing in the homework. So we could see if there were things that they needed, we needed to go over. Okay, so it was much more informative. Okay, so that was initially why we um, started. Also, the other thing was that we wanted to be able to improve the presentations that we gave to students because a lot of the time we use PowerPoint and it becomes, in my opinion, boring. Because you, if all you do is have words come up, probably by the end of this hour you are going to be suicidal because I've got words coming up. But it, it can be very boring and even with a bit of animation, it doesn't engage the students. Because the students have much more media available to them all the time. And so therefore we wanted to enrich the media that we could put within our presentations. And we wanted things that would be easy to find because you could search the internet. You could go onto Google and put in your search, but to find the quality and just the thing that you want can be very difficult and very time consuming. So we wanted something that was time efficient. Okay? Okay. We also wanted to be able to check how well our students had understood things. Because obviously as a teacher, the ideal scenario is you teach them something, you find out whether they understand it, and then when you find the bits they don't understand, that's what you review. So we wanted a way of individually being able to assess that. Because the trouble is in a lesson, if you have a discussion, a few people answer but you can maybe not really be sure that everybody understands to the same degree. And so we wanted something that was more individualised. The students, I've, I've been on a conference and apparently in the digital age, if a student does not get feedback within 400 milliseconds, <laughs> all right, it is invalid in their head. That's the gaming culture for you, okay? So 400 milliseconds, unbelievably quickly. Well, obviously, by doing the activities in YTeach, they get that immediate feedback, and you do not have to be online into the wee hours of the morning waiting for them to send something. It's just automatically marked, which is fantastic, okay? Obviously, because in our, I'm sure it's the same wherever you are as a teacher, the marking is very, very time consuming. And so if there is even some activities that you could set that don't require you to mark them, but you get the feedback, that again, as far as we were concerned, was a thumbs up, a very positive thing. Um, and as I said, it's also intended to inform future planning of lessons so that it can be more targeted to the specific thing that the students need. So it better allows you to assess how well they've acquired something. Now, unfortunately, it's missed out one of my bits because I added that this morning. So the other thing that we wanted to do, we've got a big push in our school at the moment to have independent learners. So the ideal would be that teachers are not the main information givers. Because in the digital age, information access moves forward really quickly. And you cannot hope to keep pace with that. 
So the idea was that if you equip your students with the skills to be able to find information out for themselves, assess where they're at for themselves, that would all be a really big positive. And so that was something else that we were looking for Why Teach to do. Okay, the reason that my opinion was swung in favour of Why Teach was because you could tell that the resources were really high quality. You could tell straight away that there was a range of media and it was really well presented. The interface was user friendly. You didn't have to be a digital native to be able to understand the layout and what you had to do. And also from my point of view, because I'm responsible for the virtual learning environment, it was compatible with our virtual learning environment. So those really were the three key things that swung things, if you like, in my teacher's favour. Okay. Now, obviously, because I don't know how much you use YTeach, what I decided to do is just concentrate on a few of the little bits so that you're better aware, maybe, of the feedback that you can get. So in terms of assessment, what happens is when you set something that's a homework within the YTeach portal, what will happen is you will get a list of all the students who've attempted it. Okay. This is only a section of my class, because if I had a class with two, four, six, seven people in, I'd be really happy, wouldn't I? But I've, I've, got, I've got 30 in this class, but this is just so that you could see it. And obviously, because this has got a line underneath, what I could do is I could click on that person's name, and I can go and see what they have actually done throughout the activity that I've set. So very quickly, I can get a, an idea of what they have and haven't understood. If it's lots of people, what I would do is I would teach it again in a different way. But if it's only a few people, I could target the help to those individuals instead of it having to be the whole class. Okay, so that's the first sort of overview. This is your check that they've actually done their homework. Because I'm sure in Poland, every student does every bit of homework that you set Yes, yeah, see, they're good students, right? In our school, not the case, okay? So probably I would have had more than seven, but I, I think I would have been doing well if I had 23. I shouldn't probably say that. Might be higher here. Okay. Then, because the activity that I set had various parts to it, it will break it down into the individual parts. So these were the three bits that I decided that I wanted them to do. So I picked them the different activities, okay, from the plethora of resources that there were, okay? And then what the students get is some, a summary screen. So when they complete the assessment, what they'll see is whether they've completed it and how many errors they made so that they can, and amazingly, our students do go back and try and improve it. So as far as I'm concerned, that is a very big plus because to get students to do anything without standing behind them with a big stick is actually quite um, impressive. Yeah. So they get a summary, which, and then in addition to that, you can get the mistakes made by the whole group. You can export the resources, the, not the resources, you can export the results. So you just tick the boxes and then there will be download the results. Okay. All right, now, if I think about how we went about putting Y Teach in place within our school, it could end up being, which I think would be a bad thing, a one person crusade. So if I'd come back to school, having seen the resources, I could have said, oh, yes, yes, you must use Y Teach, and it wouldn't be utilised to the extent that it is now. So the first thing that we did was, I'm not going to click on this because I think I might, not, I might jump ahead, right? First thing is you need to identify teachers in the plural that are, gonna, that are going to look for the resources that are, your students will find useful, okay? So that is what I would recommend that you do. You find a couple, I don't know what kind sizes of school you have. 
Our school has got 1,050 people in it. I don't know if that's big for Poland. It's big, okay? So within our school, we probably would have had five teachers. So in your school, if it's smaller, you could, you could scale that down. But I would avoid it being just one teacher because otherwise it will become, that's Elaine's project, yeah? And what you actually want is for everybody to use it, yeah? So identify, I would identify a few, what I've called teachers. In England, we call them champions, okay? <laughs> champions of why teach or why teach champions, okay? Don't quite know, but that's what it becomes, okay? I'm calling them teachers to lead, okay? So you want to, teach, to identify some teachers who are going to invest a bit of time, not a lot of time, a bit of time in trying to identify the right resources for your school because it will be different for every school. I didn't tell you, but I've told you now there's uh, 1,050 people in the school. We have people from 11 up to 18, but we only have boys from 11 to 16. So we only have boys from 11 to 16, and then once it gets above 16, we have 20 girls in 300 boys, in a, in a population of 300, okay? So the girls are very popular. Right, once you've done that, these lead teachers, as I say, are going to identify the activities that are most appropriate for your school. Um, and maybe by the time I finish this presentation, you'll get an idea of, because I've included student views, of the kinds of things that might engage your students. Okay, the final thing, if you want to spread this, if you want to spread why I teach throughout the school or anything, in my opinion, you need to monitor the impact that it is having on your school. Because if other staff can see that there is a positive impact, either in terms of the student outcomes or in terms of your workload, because if you can manage your workload to be doing less in terms of preparation, it gives you time to interact with the students, which is why I'm sure you went into teaching. You did not go... I think you'd be very odd people if you went into teaching to do planning. Right? You went into teaching because you wanted to enhance the life of young people. Right? I hope. I'm sure, not I hope. Okay.